Welcome to the morning offering, your daily call to prayer. Pray with us every day right here on the podcast and in your inbox. Learn more at morningoffering.com. Hey, y'all. Welcome to your morning offering. My name is Father Brad Doyle, and today is Wednesday, October 30th of the 30th week of Ordinary Time. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world, for the salvation of souls, the reparation of sins, the reunion of all Christians, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father this month. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Like I said yesterday, uh, Ephesians, this part of Ephesians is, is kind of confusing for modern people because we see it from our perspective when we should see it from the heart of how it was written and who it was written for, and then it'll make sense and apply to our context. So this part of Ephesians um, has been misused throughout history. In fact, um, slave owners at all times of history, but particularly in uh, the uh North Atlantic slave trade time period in the United States history um, and the history of the New World um, have used this to justify their immoral and horrible sins of slavery and abuse towards people just because of their race. Paul says this, he's talking to the Ephesians and he's talking to some Ephesians who are slaves. They're not chattel slavery in the same way that we understand in, in our context in North America. Um, it's more of what's called indentured servitude, someone that might be a, a prisoner of war, not in this situation, or someone who had debt. And so they work to pay off their debt and they are, they can't leave, <laughs> and we, you know, which isn't good, but Paul's slowly working towards their emancipation. We'll see in another uh, book called Philemon, where Philemon is a Christian who has a slave. Uh, his name is Onesimus. And Paul, he sends Onesimus to Paul, and Onesimus converts. He accepts the Lord. He, he receives grace. He's baptized. And then when he sends him back, he writes to Philemon. And he says, receive him as you would receive me. I will pay his debts. He's actually ransoming a slave. He's like, Philemon, set him free. So we see that Paul doesn't think slavery is good, but in the Ephesians and the in the context of the time, legal slavery was a thing. So Paul, if he calls for a revolt of all the slaves, their fate would be similar to Spartacus. Only a hundred years earlier, six thousand slaves revolted with Spartacus, and six thousand of them were crucified and lined the Appian Way. Paul needs to be prudent. And so the, the verse actually says, it says, Slaves, be obedient to your human masters with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not only when being watched as currying favor, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, willingly serving the Lord and not men, knowing that each will be requited from the Lord for whatever good he has done, whether he is a slave or a free. And Paul's clear in other parts, like there's there's no slave, there's no free, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, right? In Christ, we have a, a shared dignity. Even in our, our humanity, we have a shared digni dignity. And when he's giving advice to the Christian slaves, he's saying, don't allow your slavery, which is immoral and a horrible situation, don't allow that to destroy your soul. Right? This would be the same advice I'd give to anybody who was in a hard situation, a situation that was an offense against their dignity. I would say, love, love. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Eventually, the church got to the point, in fact, when the Roman Empire became fully Christian, when Christendom came, that's when slavery was abolished in the Roman Empire and the Western world. And it wasn't until Catholics disobeyed the church's teaching in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, Catholics were asked to not have slaves. Popes wrote papal encyclicals and Catholics disobeyed it. We need to follow the church. The church will lead us into truth. But when we disobey it, we mess everything up. 
This has been your reflection for today. If it was helpful for you, uh, go to morningoffering.com, sign up, and we'll be in your inbox every morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Morning Offering is a production of Good Catholic, the media division of The Catholic Company. For more faith-filled podcasts and videos, visit goodcatholic.com.